Welcome YouTube. This year I decided to play a little more War Machine and Hordes along with Warhammer Fantasy. So here's what I've decided to do. I've decided to start up, do you recognize these guys? Legion of Everblight. Uh, our, one of our local game stores is going to have a slow grow type escalation league starting in April. And I thought I would start with these guys and document my journey with the Legion of Everblight. Give you guys any kind of tips or tactics that I learn. One thing to note that this battle box is a good point value because that right there is the Carnivian. Yeah, he looks a little weird. I don't have all his back spikes on. They're over here in this. But uh, I'll put those on soon. Anyway, the Carnivian comes in. He's your heavy war beast at 11 points. He's your beat stick at the low point games or the battle box or war pack, whatever you want to call them. And it comes with four shredders. These guys are lesser war beasts. They're two points each. So really that's 19 points. But Lilith, she's a six point war caster, so that's really 13. I think Crix comes in at 14. And then all the other war machine and hordes, battle boxes and war packs come in at anywhere from 10 to 12 or points or so. So if you're playing just a battle box game, these guys are pretty good uh, as far as what you get for your points. Okay, let's talk about the war pack first. In it, you get these four shredders. Uh, they're lesser war beasts. They're the only lesser war beasts, to my knowledge, in the whole game. Uh, for two points each, they're actually a bargain. Their defense is on the low side for something small, 13. Their armor is 12, but they have 13 boxes. And those of you that are familiar with Focus versus Fury, that basically gives your Warlock 13 extra hit points if she can transfer damage to the beast. But what makes these guys worth taking is they have a special ability. Actually, they, for, for two points, these guys are really a bargain. Not a bad deal. What makes the Shredder really, really good is it has its Animus. And for you guys that are just starting out in War Machine, Animus is a spell that the beast can cast either on himself or on another war beast or on a warlock, etc. Uh, so his animus is tenacity. The Carnivian over here, he has a different animus. But what tenacity gives you is it gives you plus one defense and one plus one armor. One thing to note about Legion is we are the glass hammer in hordes. Our beasts typically have a lower defense, typically around 11, give or take, where a lot of even trolls, their big heavy beasts, and scoring their big heavy beasts have 12s. So what that means is our beasts are hit easier, and our armor tends to be okay. It's, get, it's not scorn level, and it's not uh, troll blood level, but it's okay. So tenacity is a good boost, especially for warlocks and put on themselves. But what makes the Shredder really, really good is its ability to go rabid. What that means is if you force the Shredder to go rabid, it gets plus two speed, Pathfinder, boosted attack, and damage rolls for one turn. So for order operation with this guy, you want to give him one, he has a two fury limit, so you'd spend one fury to uh, tell him to charge, and his second fury to go rabid and that would give you the plus two speed pathfinder boosted attack and damage rolls well you'd get the plus you'd get the damage roll for charging but the other bonuses are huge uh, one thing to note uh, a lot of legion if not all their beasts are blood creation that means these models never attack friendly warlocks when a beast goes crazy or frenzies it'll attack a lot of times the closest model and there, there's a there's a series of of what it'll charge and what it won't. But anyways, you don't have to worry about it attacking your own warlock. And then something that was added is snacking, which can come in handy. Basically, lets them heal D3 points. And then there's soulless, which is it doesn't generate a, a soul token when destroyed. Notice I didn't say if destroyed, but when destroyed. These little bastards, they're great. They die. Maybe that's why you get four of them in the starter box. Uh, I would always, when I'm running, well, my plan to is, I haven't played these guys yet, but my plan is to have three of these 
uh, be available to charge and, and uh, you know, attack my enemy along with the Carnivian. The fourth one will stay back, sort of as a bodyguard, to Lilith, where Lilith can transfer damage and just help protect her. And these are li really versatile little beasts. Next unit we're going to talk about in the war pack is the Carnivian. The Carnivian coming in at 11 points, that's a true heavy beast. That's sort of actually expensive for a battle box. But what makes this guy good is he gets a bite and then two talon slash, you could call them claws, they're open hands attacks. So this guy has three attacks base. He has four fury, which means he could have up to seven attacks in a turn. And that's not even counting if he gets his assault off, which basically is another rule I'll go over in a second. The Carnivian has 30 boxes. That's pretty good. That's pretty typical with Scorn. And maybe even typical with Troll Bloods. Most uh, Circle War Beasts don't have that many. So his strength is 12. His defense is 11. His armor is 18. So, you know, they are truly a glass cannon or glass hammer as people will call him. Uh, his, he has a spray of 10 inches. That's the longest spray in the game. That is great for helping kill out infantry. Now granted in the battle box scenario or war pack scenario, they're not, you're not going to run into infantry. Uh, but that's what he's good for. And you can also use him for a caster kill. But just with a rat of four, he's going to need to boost against good targets to try to take them down. His bite is a POW 18, or POW and strength comes to 18, and each talon comes to 16. 16 is okay, 18 is where it's at, so when you have to start buying extra attacks, you definitely want to start, you want to buy the bite attacks. In the battle box scenario, my goal with, with this guy is you want to either have him go after your opponent's heavy war jack or heavy war beast, or use him for a caster kill. You don't want this guy getting tied up with uh, light war jacks and stuff like that. Uh, he is meant for assassination or taking out other heavies. And you want to get the charge off because he, uh, if another war beast hits him, he, even with 30 damage boxes, he'll probably be hurt pretty bad. And let's talk about the Carnivian a little more. The, he's soulless also which means he doesn't generate a soul token and he's blood creation which means he won't attack friendly faction warlocks if he goes frenzy and then he has assault this is what is pretty decent assault uh, is a way to let you do a spray attack as part of a charge attack so for those of you that don't know what assault are I would recommend going to the, the website battlecollege.com that is probably the best War Machine Horde's website on the internet, in my opinion. They have all the tactics, all the things you'll need. So it's a really, really good resource. And as far as uh, another plus on the Carnivian is he has his Animus. It costs two, which two is on the expensive end for Animus. One is cheap. I don't know if there's any three outs there. I don't remember seeing any, but there could possibly be a three. I doubt it. But what Spiny Growth gives you is plus two armor. So that bumps this guy's armor from 18 to 20. So that is very, very good. Uh, another good thing about spiny growth is if a war jack or war beast attacks him, they suffer D3 damage, point, damage points immediately after the attack has been resolved. So this is your way of uh, allowing a little, you know, put a little hurting on your enemy as they hurt you. So that's pretty good. All right, and then to the battle box, what you, probably the most key thing is this right here. I really need to get a macro mode. Guys, you know, I, I know I've been using, this is a digital camera that takes video. I hope to, when I get my taxes back, get an actual video camera. So just bear with me for a little while. Anyway, this right here is Lilith. Uh, you'll hear, hear her called P. Lilith or Lilith 1. She comes in the box set and she is your warlock. Lilith is a five fury warcaster so her control zone is only 10 inches that's on the short range so that means she gets up she has to get up close. The good thing about Lilith is her bow is range 12, POW 12 with a rate of fire of 2 
So that's pretty decent. It ranks up there with the hand cannons, which are the same, has the same stats. And she has a bow blade, <coughs> excuse me, which basically if she gets into close combat, she, can, she has an attack, but it's PNS of 7. If she gets into close combat, you've done something wrong and you're going to probably die. One thing to note about Lilith is also she is speed 7, so she's fast. She's as fast as Warcasters to get that aren't mounted. Her defense is 16, which is good. Armor 14, not too good. And she has uh, 15 boxes. So a little on the squishy side. If, you know, Just make sure if you put that tenacity on her, it bumps her up to 17 and 15, which is, which is very good. Okay, Lilith also has the bushwhack, bushwhack ability. What this lets you do is it makes you, lets you uh, take a shot and then move instead of moving and then having to shoot. So this'll, this could let you shoot and then back away. In the Escalation League, or starting out, it's probably going to most likely be caster kills instead of scenarios. So this, is, this will be a good ability. Uh, when you get up to scenarios, not so much because you have to, you know, a lot of them you have to have a control point, which means you have to be close, and Lilith doesn't want to be that close. And her bow, Hellsinger, has Blood Lure and Witch Mark. Uh, Blood Lure lets you, lets any of your beasts, which are these lessers, and then the big fatty over there, Carnivian, charge for free. Any, it lets basically any model in her battle group charge for free with whatever she hit with her bow that turn. Remember, she's got two shots, so she could actually shoot two different things. And then she has Witch Mark. Witch Mark will let you, it's a good little ability too, of uh, any attacks. If she hits something with her bow, then you can cast a spell and ignore the range and line of sight till the end of the model's activation fee phase. Sorry about that. So now we're going to get up to what her feet does. For those of you new to War Machine, a feat is a special ability. It's not a spell, but it's a special action, if you will. Well, it's not even real special. It's a special ability. Let's just call it that. That allows you to, once a game, you know, do this ability. And her special ability is all friendly faction models in her control area, which is 10 inches, remember, gain an additional die on attack rolls. So basically they're getting boosted to hit rolls. Well, not really that useful on the little guys if you make them go rabid. It can be good on this guy. So, and it also boost for herself. So, probably when you want to cast do her feet, as with most feats, but not all feats, is when it comes time that you're going to do the assassination roll. Getting free boosted to hits isn't bad. And if these guys are locked into combat, then, you know, that would be a good time. With Lilith only having uh, five fury, she has three spells, bad blood, parasite, and eruption of spines. Uh, they are decent spells. Parasite uh, is a spell that gives your an enemy model or unit minus three armor. And this model gains plus one. So that can help her a little bit. In her defensive, what that basically help, helps is these little shredders. These guys are only, their attack value is 10. So if you're able to get Parasite on a unit and then have them guys go in with boosted 10s, with them already being at minus 3, they could really do some heavy damage to, actually, they could, they could to Light War Beast, they could do a, a significant amount of damage into heavies. They can put a hurting on him. So don't underestimate what the shredders can do once Parasite's been cast on a on a unit. Eruption of Spines is another spell. It's going to be good about. It's going to be good for taking out infantry or solos. Basically, uh, D6 models within five inches suffer a pal ten. Not going to really do anything to your uh, heavy war beasts, but uh, it, it can come in handy. Let me show you what it could do. One way to use Eruption of Spines would be to cast it on the Carnivian because he's. He's easier to hit. He has a lower defense than the Warcaster. This right here is Thagrosh, but it's not going to be a good example, but it'd be, it, you'll get the gist of what I'm trying to say. So basically, it's a PAL-10. Not going to do much damage to him, but if you have a Warcaster that has a real high defense of like 16 or 17, it says D6 models within 5 inches. So 
it would definitely hit this one, and this is where you'd want to boost. If this was a squishy Warcaster with a low armor value, then that 10 can put a hurting on them pretty good. It does cost 3 Fury to cast it, so Lilith is only going to be doing this spell once. But if you've got a wounded Warcaster that's close to something that's easy to hit with a low defense, like a Heavy Beast or Heavy Warjack, then that's a good way to pick off a Warcaster. The last thing that Lilith can do is called Bad Blood. Bad Blood is only good when playing other Hordes armies because it basically affects the Warcaster. If he leeches from a beast that has bad blood on him, they take a point of damage along with the Fury for each Fury. So, I mean, that can be anywhere from, you know, 3 to 5 Fury, which would be 3 to 5 damage points. Can be useful. I see it as situational at best. I don't see it as uh, your go-to spell like uh, Parasite is going to be. And occasionally when you get a chance, Eruption at Spines. Now, finally, the big, probably the biggest thing that people whine about that Legion has is their ability to have Eyeless Sight. Eyeless Sight is huge. Remember, a lot of our war beasts have spray abilities and ranged abilities. What does Eyeless Sight let you do? Well, it lets you ignore cloud effects, forest, and also when determining line of sight, and helps you to ignore concealment and stealth when making attacks. That is huge. Uh, the Crix hates this because they, they have a lot of stealthy units and they just, the spray attacks because they have low defenses on a lot of their stuff will just eat through the hordes of their infantry. But anyways, that's one of the big cries that people have against play-in Legion is, oh, they ignore everything. And that is a huge, huge uh, army advantage. So there you go. There's a basic overview of uh, the Legion War Pack and how they play. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting in games with these guys and I'm going to try to do something, somebody on the internet and I can't remember who, he suggested or maybe it was actually the privateer forums. I'm going to play this Warcaster at least five times that way I know how she plays. Uh, one thing I've been doing is hopping a, a, around my Warlocks and Warcasters and sometimes you don't get a good feel. And another thing I've decided to do is just play Legion this year. I have decided that Legion is going to be my army for this year, even though I have some Kador, some Signar, and some Circle. And I'm trying to get rid of the Circle. Their play style just doesn't really match my play style. Uh, the one thing I like about Legion is they have a lot of spray attack and ranged attack. They are, and people can argue about the troll bloods, but as far as their beasts and stuff, they have more ranged attacks than probably any other Horde's army. And guys, thanks for this video starting to drag on, and thanks for watching. We're going to have updates as I progress through Legion. Uh, if you have any comments on what colors I should paint these guys, that'd be great. I don't think I want to go with the traditional grayish and black. I'm, I think I want to paint something different. So if you got any pictures or links to other Legion models or suggestions, just let me know. Hey guys, have a good day. Bye.